Hello again everyone, um, thank you for joining us for our further adventure through the mangrove ecosystem. Um, today what I want to do is I want to concentrate on an individual, an individual organism. Uh, that in individual organism is this mangrove tree. The mangrove tree that I'm sitting at the base of here is a red mangrove. Now red mangrove is the common name, but its scientific name is Rhizophora stylosa. In our previous video, we discussed the collection of energy from the sun and the movement of that energy through this mangrove ecosystem. Now, a mangrove ecosystem is indeed a true marine ecosystem, and bearing that in mind, the water that these plants are using to produce their food is actually very salty. In this area, we're probably looking at around um, 35 parts per thousand of the water is actually salt. So this group of small red mangrove trees we have here in front of us, they are very well adapted to living in a salty environment. The water needed by the plant enters the plant through the roots. It then passes up through the xylem as it moves from the roots up into the stem and the trunk of the tree. It then passes all the way out to the leaves. That process is called transpiration. And it's actually driven by another process that we call evaporation. So the water, when it arrives at the leaves, evaporates from the leaf surface. And then that has an effect of drawing further water up from the roots. That is the process of transpiration that's driven by evaporation. In a salty marine environment, these plants, these living organisms can't afford to lose too much water. So if we have a closer look at our red mangrove leaves, you will notice that they're actually quite thick. Some would even say leathery. They have a very thick waxy cuticle and that prevents too much water loss from the leaves. That's one of their adaptations. On red mangrove, you notice the aerial prop roots that actually branch off from the main stem of the plant. These prop roots do exactly as their name suggests. They actually support the plant as it, as it experiences the high tidal flow, large volumes of water that move past this trunk. These aerial prop roots also allow the passage of air into the, into the body of the plant. They have on their surface lenticels. Can you see these small nodules? Now these lenticels are actually openings, they're holes which allow air into the roots. That air then passes along channels made of cells uh, that are basically called aronchyma. So this aronchyma allows the passage of oxygen through the plants and down to the root system where there's not really an abundance of oxygen. Now the reason there's not as much oxygen found around the roots of mangrove trees is because between the, the sediment that these mangrove trees are sitting in, the small spaces are actually filled with water. There's no, not much air between those particles. If we were in a terrestrial forest, if we were in a, a forest on land, then there'd be air spaces between the grains, between the granules of the sediment that the, the forest is sitting in. But because we're here in a truly marine environment, it means that the spaces between the grains is actually taken up with water. Now, water doesn't have the same sort of carrying capacity of oxygen as air does. So this is a problem and that is why these red mangrove trees are very well adapted to living here. Those lenticels and the aronchyma ensure that the oxygen gets to where it needs to be. So the roots of the red mangrove, they want to allow oxygen into the plant. They also want to allow water into the plant. But the one thing that they don't want to allow in, of course, is the salt. So the red mangrove root system has a membrane 
and this membrane acts a little bit like a sieve. It allows water molecules to pass through because they're quite small compared to the salt molecules. So the water passes through the membrane and the salt, so the larger salt molecules, remain on the outside. That way it avoids collecting too much salt into the body. I suppose in the same way as if you were to try and separate your pasta from your water after you finish cooking it, you may pour it into a colander or a sieve. The water passes through the holes and the pasta remains in the sieve. Very similar, although without the pasta. <laughs> so these are our structural adaptations that allow the red mangrove to survive in this ever-changing marine environment. Next time we see you, I'll be talking to you about the grey mangrove and the adaptations that this organism has to survive in the marine environment. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.